Hey, welcome back. Tonight on the Future of Everything Interstellar. How amazing is it that we humans have a word for something that literally flies between stars? And so far, we've only known about two interstellar visitors in our recorded history. That is until now, because astronomers have just detected another something out there blazing into our solar system at like 152,000 miles an hour. And unlike Earth and the rest of the planets that are locked into orbit, this thing is not going to be here for very long. Now, you might remember the other two interstellar objects that we've talked about a lot here. The first one was Oumuamua back in 2017. It was known for that weird long shape, the weird movements and, and all of the theories behind its origins. Then came 21 Borisov. It looked a little bit more like a, a traditional comet. Now entering the solar system chat is 31 Atlas. <laughs> this is it right here, just popped up on astronomers' radar a few days ago, thanks to the Atlas Planetary Defense System. It is still a blurry dot in the sky, but the early data is suggesting that this thing could be miles wide. The good news for Earth, 31 Atlas is not coming anywhere near us. This is the trajectory right here. It's kind of close to Mars, but not really, uh, but it's still pretty far away from Earth. Uh, researchers say it'll swing by the sun at about twice our distance. That's going to happen right around Halloween. Our next guest helped calculate its trajectory. So let's hope he is right. Dr. Uh, Peter Varesh is an astronomer at Harvard's Minor Planet Center. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Let's start with a track here. Like, how good of a look are we going to get at this thing come late October? Good evening from the Minor Planet Center. So indeed, we are very lucky that we discovered this object because it is such a rare event, only third ever in our history to be detected. And we are also lucky because the object was detected pretty far from Earth, and we will have almost one year to observe this object. It is also quite massive and pretty bright, so right now even amateur astronomers can observe it and actually submit data to us, to the Minor Planet Center. It, it seems extremely bright. Uh, are, are these super rare, or are we just getting better at, at seeing them out there in the dark? I would say they regularly go through the solar system, but until now we didn't have the detection capabilities to see them. So thanks to the program like NASA's Planetary Defense uh, and the, the activities funded by NASA, they are searching for near Earth asteroids. These objects are being finally found. And, and when it comes to planetary defense, when, when it comes to just calculating the trajectories here, like I have science fiction in my head, so I just think of a big like control room, and it's like, oh look, sir, we have something inbound. But I, I understand that a lot of this is, you know, a collaboration between NASA, uh, amateur astronomers, uh, it, it, what you guys do at Harvard. How, how does it actually work? How are the trajectories uh, it, calculated, and what makes us so sure it's interstellar? So basically, you need a lot of observations. At the moment this object was first seen, it wasn't really clear this is an interstellar object. It was, again, one of the typical candidates for a near-Earth object. Mm -hmm. But thanks to the fact that people thought this is a potential near-Earth object, it was posted to our object website, near-Earth object confirmation page. And we quickly got a follow-up from people around the world, from amateur astronomers, from professionals, also people looking through archives, uh, and it was pretty clear within a day this object is not bound to the sun, and we got a really uh, strong hyperbolic orbit. So it was clear and evident within one day this object is not bound to the sun, and it's flying to the solar system at this point. Uh, you can never have enough people looking up, I guess. Uh, uh, any idea on, on where it's coming from, and, and how does it compare in size and speed to Oumuamua or Borisov? It's coming from the upper direction of the constellation of Sagittarius, and it will be flying away toward the constellation of Gemini. And uh, it's apparently much larger than Oumuamua or Boriso. Of course, at this moment, we don't know its exact size because it was only discovered two days ago. So large telescopes are pointing toward this object as we are speaking right now. But the estimated diameter could be somewhere between 10 to 20 kilometers. Uh, hmm. or even smaller if the object is active, and it's likely to be active. So it's much larger. Uh, Oumuamua was only about like 50 to 100 meters across and flat, very uh, odd shaped. And Boriso was a comet that has probably half a kilometer across. But this object is much larger and much brighter, and we have a lot of time to observe it.
And I got to ask this, but as one of the first humans to start running the numbers on this thing, do you get do you get nervous when you're calculating the trajectory and how close it could pass to Earth? Of course, certainly. Even in this case, it was very surprising to see such an orbit uh, that we had in our computers. So at the beginning, I couldn't believe this is interstellar. So I was even thinking maybe some observations are wrong. I was even contacting observers. Can you please confirm your observations are correct? And they responded, yes, they are. So even for us, it was really an exciting discovery. Very exciting. And, and we are all praying your math holds up. Uh, doctor, thanks so much for being with us tonight. We thank you for watching and remember, stay updated on breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or watch live on our YouTube channel.